Hi, this is Carlton Cullens, and welcome to the Blue Sky Strong Box. Hey, this is Carlton Cullens with the Blue Sky Strong Box here in Austin, Texas. And this week I want to talk about the three different type of muscle contractions and how they affect your workout and how they affect what is called tempo, which is nothing more than the speed that you're doing the exercises at. So it sounds technical and you're probably wondering why do I need to know this stuff. You don't really need to know the technical name for all this stuff, you just need to know what they are and how they can work for you because it's an easy way to change up whatever you're doing and start getting results possibly tomorrow. Because a lot of people, like it or not, do the same exercises over and over and over. A lot of people work out, say, at home and they have a limited amount of equipment that they use. Maybe they can't up the, the, the increase the weights because they don't have any more room, they don't have enough money to get more, more stuff, or whatever. Maybe you don't have any equipment. Or maybe you work out at a gym and you've got a, there's a whole bunch of stuff there, but you only go at busy times. And when you go, somebody else is always using the stuff you want to use, so you can't use it. So what are you going to do? Maybe you travel and you're working out in very minimal hotel gyms, or maybe you're limited and confined to your hotel room to do your workouts and you just don't have many options. This is a great way to, a great tool to, to use to give you a lot more options, so pay attention. Uh, you, you don't really need to know the names of these memorizing. Like I said, just, just pay attention to what they are. So say we're doing a squat. And we're squatting down and then coming back up. The going down part is called an eccentric contraction. A lot of people also in the weight world call it negatives. So you're going down. It doesn't always mean it's going to be going down. It just means that you're yielding to the resistance. You're not pushing it back up. You're yielding and letting the weight come down. That is the eccentric contraction. If you're doing a push-up, it would be the going down part. But like I said, it's not always going to be going down. Sometimes it's going sideways and other stuff. It just depends on the resistance. The second contraction is an isometric contraction. That is nothing more than the pause. You can pause on any, any exercise. It's got to be a contracted pause. It's not a pause where you're relaxed and it's easy for you. It's a contraction where you're actually flexing the muscles, but there's no movement involved. So say you're pushing a car straight armed and you're pushing a car, that's pretty much going to, your arms are going to have an isometric contraction. If you're doing a squat and you pause at the bottom or you pause anywhere in the middle, even pause at the top and you've got a weight loaded or something in your hands, it's an isometric contraction. The third type of contraction is called a concentric. Like I said, these names are important, but just pay attention. Bear with me. The concentric part is the typically the you're overcoming the resistance. So if you're in a squat, coming up against the resistance, against your body weight or against a weight in your hands or weight on your back or weight in the front, that's the concentric part. If you're doing a push-up, that's the, the pushing up against the resistance. That's the concentric part. These three can be manipulated over and over and over again. I would say typically, if you're doing any of the concentrics, whether you're, say you're pushing up, or you're squatting up, or you're pushing away, or you're pulling back, all those are those concentric contractions are what all those are. You typically always want to do those about as fast as you can go with perfect form. The other two, you can manipulate over and over and again. This is a good tool to start tomorrow. So say you've been doing, say you like to do bicep curls. I'm just going to use this for example, and this is too bad. Say you normally do this speed, which is probably too fast for most people, but you're doing that. Say you do 12. Starting tomorrow, you could do, this part is the concentric, so you want to keep that about the same, nice fast. But tomorrow you could do the same amount, say you did 12, but come down slow. You could use a certain number, you could come down 2 or 3 seconds, doesn't matter, but just come down slow and try doing the same 12 with the same weight. Whatever exercise, you squat and doing any exercise. Try doing the same repetition, same way that you always do, but change the, the negative part, the eccentric contraction, to two, three, four seconds and see how easy it is to do the same number of repetitions. Pretty much across the board, whatever you've been doing, it's now going to be harder. So you can, if you're at home and you've got the same weight you, and you want to make it harder, you just slow down on the negative part and then go back up as fast as you can with perfect form. That right there, just that little tweak right there can help you get a lot of results. It helps your body, particularly if you're, say if you're squatting and your knees tend to, tend to come in. By lowering slowly, you can concentrate on reprogramming your hard drive and your brain a little bit to correct that and then come up with good form. Now the isometric contraction, those pauses, you can put a pause in anywhere. But if you put a pause in somewhere, it's going to make you tired really, really quick. So say we're doing those same 12 again and you're coming up. You could pause anywhere. Say you're coming up fast. Coming down slow, maybe you pause in the middle, and then, uh, and then back up fast. 
You could pause anywhere. You could pause at the bottom. But you add a pause in there, and now it's going to make it even harder. That same 12 that you just changed up from the one before, now the third time you change it, it's going to be even harder. You'll probably be able to do less of those. That right there are easy ways to modify stuff. What I often do in my workouts is if I'm doing, say, I'm squatting, whatever squat I'm doing, I will maybe come down two or three seconds, pause at the bottom, and come back up. And what I'll do is that when I get closer to the end, I might pause longer on the very last repetition and then rack it and put it away. I'm usually wiped out after that. Easy ways is to change up, and that affects your tempo. The tempo is just the speed that you're doing all this stuff. So this right here can change up any workout that you've currently been doing the same exercise you always do and just add this to it and now they're different. Now this doesn't always apply. There's some things like a kettlebell swing where you're here and I'm pretty much going as fast, fast as, as I smoothly can up and down. There's no way to do that exercise slow or fast. If you did, it probably wouldn't be good for you. It might even be dangerous for you. So there are instances where it doesn't always apply. But that's a pretty advanced exercise. If you got to the point where you're doing those, you should know what you're doing and you should already be aware of all this stuff. But if you're not, this is great stuff to be aware of. Don't worry about the name of it. Just know what it is and how to use it. That's my tips for this week. Hope you have any questions. Write me as always and I'll see you next week.